I've received a few questions recently about normalization and the software model records. Uh, now, when you're working with normalization, you're working with that name field at the uh, at the highest level of uh, of the product model tables. So you're working at the product model level and not just at the software model. And this can cause some issues. But the other big challenge when you're normalizing software model records is that you really would be looking to normalize two fields at once. And you can't really do that. So you'd have the name field that you'd be looking to normalize. And that may work out to be just the name, like Acrobat. You may even have just Acrobat uh, here. But you'd also be looking to work with the version field, like 9. Uh, Pro is not really a version, so my demo data here is not exactly um, quality in this case, because really we'd be looking at the, the version of being 10 for Acrobat X or Acrobat 10. Uh, so to properly normalize software model names, you'd need to be looking to normalize two fields instead of just one. But you shouldn't really need to get to the point where you're normalizing software model names and software model records because you create those software model records. Now let me bring up the different components that go into software asset management in ServiceNow to explain. So within ServiceNow, we have a number of different records that contribute to determining your overall software compliance. You've got your installation records that should be picked up from some type of discovery source, not necessarily ServiceNow Discovery. You may have a deployment tool like Alteris, Landesk, SCCM, Casper. And those install records get created when you bring that data into ServiceNow. ServiceNow will then create something called a discovery model, which may may have multiple installs associated with it depending on that related information and it's usually going to be related to some sort of minor release of the software. The discovery models though aren't how we're doing the work around software compliance and software asset management. Uh, the real work is happening at that software model where we're bringing together uh, the installs through the discovery model, and the assets, which are your software license records. Those software models can get created in uh, a couple of different ways. And let's go back to the instance to take a look. So the discovery model gets created. You can create a software model manually, or you can do it from the discovery model. So let's go down here. Let's say I want to create a software model for iTunes. I've got a number of different minor releases. There's a discovery model associated with each of those. If I go into the record here, because I don't already have a software model associated with this discovery model, I can create a software model encounter for it automatically. Now, when I do that, it's going to take me to uh, the counter record that it creates. But now I'm all configured and set up to uh, work with uh, my compliance for iTunes. And I can set my license type and identify my other settings that I need to for my software counter. But here I just want to point out what it comes down to in terms of managing your software models and software uh, discovery models is you, you need to identify those discovery models that match up with a particular software model. So I'm going to, what you can do is you can filter uh, on various pieces of information, whether it's display name and or version, well, probably and version, you wouldn't do just version. Um, and, and so I'm going to pop out, this is the Eureka version, so we have the ability to put in multiple items here. So maybe I want to search for iTunes, and the version contains 11. And so I get all of my iTunes versions that contain 11. And now I can apply my Apple iTunes software model 
to all of these at one time through the list edit capabilities within ServiceNow. So I can hold down the shift and drag down, or I could use uh, Command on Windows, on, on Macintosh, Control on Windows to select or deselect any fields uh, individually within that. Double click on one of the selected items, and then I can, oop, then I can quickly apply my software model to all of the appropriate discovery models. And that's really the, the best approach to getting your software model set up and applied uh, to the discovery models in the appropriate way to allow you to uh, track your, your licenses and track your management around that. Now a note on the software licenses. You shouldn't create your software licenses until you have your software model created. Uh, whether that's manually creating those software licenses or importing them from some source, whether it's a spreadsheet or some sort of ERP system you have that has the information for your software licenses, you need that software model to be created first. So if you've already brought in a number of uh, software licenses and they're pointing to the wrong models, uh, this is one place where uh, not being able to use or not using the normalization would really have a negative impact. You can't coalesce and just merge those software licenses to point to the single model. I, I would look to remove the models that are pointing to, uh, the software licenses that are pointing to invalid models, if you had some invalid models created in your environment, and then re-import them with the pointer to the appropriate and correct software model in your environment. And uh, that's a, a quick look at how you can handle software models and their associated records and why normalization does not really work with software models.